and welcome to a new video. My name is Herr Buda and today is my first Q&A video. A few videos ago I was asking for questions so you had to put Q&A and then your question. Thank you very much. I had a lot of questions so not all of these questions will be on this video. So I will record and I will do like 10 questions uh, and then I will make another video. So each week there will be like one Q&A video with all your questions. So if you have a question, you can put it underneath this video in the comments and you have to make sure that you are uh, putting Q&A and then your question. So I know it's a Q&A for my Q&A videos, Q&A, uh, Q&A. So are you ready for the first Q&A video? But before we start, can I please ask you to subscribe to my channel Press that notification bell. You can also follow me on Instagram and you can follow me on TikTok. So there will be no hair fail today, just the Q&A. And uh, I said it, I put it all in this uh, iPad and I will take one by one. I would like to do 10 uh, questions and then 10 for another video. So I think I have enough questions for four or five videos. So check out my channel, uh, press that notification bell so you you know I put a new video on it. So we will start with the first one. This is from Vex Fans, and her question is, what do you think about using Swarovskov Blonde Me Bleach with 20 volumes? So on hair that was bleached, once that's, once that's light brown. I'm spacing it a month apart. Should I bleach it sooner or later? And should I bleach the regrowth with the already bleached hair at the same time? I'm sorry if I uh, read it not correctly because uh, you know uh, and you hear it. Uh, English is not my mother tongue. I never had English in school. My, my daughter has English. Uh, my two daughters had English, has English in class. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, but I never had English so I have to study it all by myself by movies and by songs. Let's say I'm trying my best to speak English. Some some words is not correctly pronounced, so I'm sorry for that. But the question. Okay, uh, Swashkov is one of my favorite products. And why? Because there is already the bond. You have different brands like L'Oreal and L'Oreal was, I think, the first one that came up with this product. L'Oreal and uh, Swashkov has a bond product that you can add to your bleaching product. It's less damaging, but the processing time has to take a little longer. And this uh, blonde me from Swarovskov, this bond product is already inside. But I always say in my salon, I, I have one bottle of 40 volumes in my salon. I can do a really long time with this one bottle of 40 volumes. We nearly never use 40 volumes. We always use 20 volumes even 10 volumes and maximum 30 volumes. I leave it a longer time but less damaging than 40 volumes and really quickly going to blonde. That quickly is quickly dead, quickly damaged. So you, and many people are laughing in the comments but because one time I said quick blue, it's quick dead but it's really like that. If you, you want to go quickly with bleach, it's quickly damaged, it's quickly dead. So this Blonde Me is a very, very, very good product and 20 volumes is very good. And she's asking, she's leaving, she's just taking one month in between. So yes, this is perfect. If it's not growing very fast, uh, maybe you could wait six weeks. But I don't know how dark your roots is. Four weeks, it's really minimum uh, to wait because you have to let your hair rest. She's asking only the regrowth or also the blonde parts. If your hair, the length is already blonde, never do that again. It's good, so don't touch it. The only thing can, that can happen is breaking. It's not like a brown color or a red color or a copper color that you have to rebuild that color again. No, it's blonde, so don't touch it. Even if it's yellow, so if you are bleaching your hair, your hair is automatically coming yellow again because your hair is restoring again. Just do the regrowth, one month in between, perfect. Blonde me 20 volumes, I would say this is a perfect combination. Second one, I have been doing curly 
a curly girl method and my hair was getting better okay but this is a good method but now it's getting worse is there something i'm doing wrong or something i can do better i miss having curly hair first of all for people that does not know what this curly girl method is if you are using products with all these chemical ingredients like sulfate or uh, or pack or parabens that is really damaging your hair and it's making your hair very heavy so it's chemically treated why are these ingredients inside your product because uh, to open your uh, cuticle to have uh, a lot of ingredients moisturizing ingredients go inside your hair uh, to put it on your scalp to uh, penetrate deeply in your uh, in your skin but all these chemical products are really bad for your scalp for your hair so if you are want to have nice curly hair you have to use products without these parabens without these sulfates uh, without pack curly girl method is really good it's a technique to take out all these um, ingredients the bad ingredients out of your hair and restart again so make your hair natural again in my salon we are not using shampoos with all these bad ingredients we have two brands uh, one is uh, italian it's uh, philip martens and it's uh, organic uh, so without without uh, uh, parabens without sulfates without pack uh, without nickel so and we have authentic beauty it's also a vegan product also without sulfate without um, parabens so we are using very natural products in my salon because I'm a big fan of that. But now she's losing her curls again. Curly hair is really difficult and it's really depending on even hormones or uh, a diet or uh, something in your body. Hormones is really for a girl or a woman, it's really changing your hair. You can gain more curls or losing curls uh, if you are in puberty. So if you are having a child, you can also uh, add or losing uh, curls. If you are getting older and these hormones again are coming really crazy. So again, changing of your hair. A strictly diet and you don't have the nutrition enough in your food, your hair can also weaken or can uh, lose your curls. You're not doing something wrong, but maybe you should go to a doctor and uh, take your blood and see if, if there's something uh, wrong in your blood if it's something you have to add. I hope I gave you some uh, answer on your question about these curls. I sometimes have an inch scalp or itchy scalp or, uh, probably after washing out the conditioner. My scalp really starts itching after two days. I first thought that it's because of my shampoo air conditioner but it happens with every shampoo conditioner I use. It is because of certain ingredients or my scalp is too sensitive or dry. Okay, so this is again, these ingredients of many shampoos are the same. And there has to be one ingredient that you are allergic to. You have to go to the doctor and check out what thing you are allergic to. It's a really long process. I suffered for one, one year with my fingers and it was hurting, it was itching, uh, it was really bad. And I was afraid that I had to stop uh, working in my salon because I, I did not find what it was. And after a long time of searching, it was perfume. You have two types of perfume mixes. You have mix one and mix two, and it's with mix two I'm allergic to. So I, now I have to use different products without this perfume mix two. So you have to search. There is a product, maybe it's a very common ingredient, uh, that are in a lot of shampoos uh, and that's why your hair, your scalp is itching. My wife has the same thing. So the one shampoo she can use and another one she can't use. So you have to search for this one ingredient and it will not go very fast. You can be lucky that you can find it immediately but sometimes it's a long process of searching and yes it is, it is an ingredient that you are allergic to. It's not really a, a a solution I gave you but I think it's really a, an ingredient that you are allergic to. The fourth question. Uh, I am probably 40% grey. I have been dyeing my hair for about 15 years and I'm tired of it. I heard that a lot in my salon. 
Uh, I refuse to go all grey. What colors or new techniques do you suggest to keep me going back to the salon? If somebody comes in my salon and they say the same thing, then I suggest to my client that they do a balayage. It's not because it's a balayage that you go white, uh, but you can go a few tones lighter because you're already coming grey. So nature is making you grey over the time. Some people at 30, some people at 60, but you're becoming grey. Even if you are black, if you were born or if you were a teenager, you were black, at some point you will become grey. So nature is giving you grey hair. If you are still coloring black, on some point, if you are 60 or 70, it will not be nice, it will not be natural anymore. Because your face is also asking for this soft, lighter color. If you are becoming grey and you are tired of coloring, I suggest you go balia. And then you have a less harsh regrowth. You can wait a little longer because the, the grey and the blonde will mix together. You have to see which color you go first. If you are like medium brown, you can go to dark blonde first and mix it again. So soften your hair and make a balayage. And a balayage you will you not have a really harsh regrowth and you can wait a little longer and it softens your skin and it softens your grey regrowth. So that's my tip to go with balayage. If you are tired of colouring and you are grey, go with balayage. Okay, the fifth question. What is the number one product you would recommend for Caucasian curly hair medium thickness? To keep frizz and make soft shiny curls. Mousse makes my hair crunchy but I have no success on finding this product. Please help me, Herr Buddha. First of all, it doesn't matter uh, which curl you have. All the curls need moisture. I have another video of uh, tips for curly hair, but let me explain. Hair is round shape. The more flat it is, the more curly it is. Like African hair is really flat. The more flat your hair is, from structure, the more curl it is. But the more flat it is, the less moisture is inside your hair, around your cuticle. You need a lot of products. I don't say this product is good because there's a product like Blonde Me, it's one of my favorites, but I get a lot of questions. I cannot buy Blonde Me in some countries. It's not available or you cannot buy it. So it's having no point of me expressing my top product. I only can say that you need a product with a lot of moisture inside. No alcohol. That's really important. So mousse is really bad. I see it makes your hair crunchy. Yes, it's a really nice look, but it's taking all the moisture out of your hair. So you have to put again more moisture inside. So mousse, stay off mousse. Hairspray, stay off hairspray. Gel, stay off gel. These are three products that I can say don't use that with curls. You have a curly mousse and it's then a really soft mousse with an extra moisture, that's okay. But a regular mousse, don't do it. If it makes your hair curly, uh, crunchy, then it's bad. So gel is doing that, hairspray is doing that and uh, mousse is doing that. If you want to have nice natural curls, you have to put moisture inside. Always search for a product with a lot of moisture. That's my tip. Next one. What is the difference between regular aluminium foil or the foils that professionals are using? Basically, there's not no difference. But with uh, the regular foils that are really white and you have to cut them in sections. The professional ones are really the, the right length to use. If you have to cut every, sec every piece in two again, if you want to do that, that's fine. Basically, there is no difference. So you can use both. We are using the, the fine ones because it's really easy to use. There are a lot of clients that having a balayage and if we have to cut all these pieces in two, so there will be a lot of time and time is money with your staff. Okay, I have a question. Can you make your own purple shampoo with food coloring and shampoo? I don't want to turn my hair purple, but want to tone my hair without using actual toner. It's very, very pale yellow. That's a difficult one. 
I see a lot of natural ingredients mixing with some shampoo to have a natural treatment, to have a natural uh, toning. You can do that, but you have to know, first of all, it's not safe. Uh, the mixture has to be right and you don't know what it will do to your hair. There's a big chance that your hair will be purple instead of neutralizing the yellow pigment. I'm very big fan of organic and vegan and all these bad ingredients taking out of the, of the products. We are using uh, coloring without ammonia, without PPD. Uh, PPD is a paraphenylindiamine. That's a product that you can very, very allergic to. So using coloring without that, uh, without nickel. But I'm really not a big fan of mixing natural things with your shampoo. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, you can try that and you can do a string to make sure. But it's okay, you have to use purple to neutralize your yellow. Why is it coming yellow? Because your hair is restoring. If you are bleaching your hair, you're breaking the bonds and you're taking all of the pigments out. Uh, and if your hair are restoring, then it restores the bonds, but it also restores the yellow pigments. So this is why blonde hair is always coming back to yellow. If it's just slightly yellow, a purple shampoo is fine. If it's orange, then a purple shampoo will do nothing. For slightly yellow tones, it's okay. But if it's really like baby chicken yellow or, or an orange uh, color, these purple shampoos will not do the trick. I'm dark haired, uh, but I dye my hair with a light color. But after a while, the hair is no longer turns white, but turns yellow. Uh, what should be done to keep the light hair color from changing? Well, I just, I just said it. I just, I didn't know this question was coming, but I just explained it, why it's turning yellow and you can do nothing about it because it's nature. Nature is restoring. Uh, these gray colors are fading and the white colors are coming yellow because your hair is restoring from nature. So this is really the answer. And some, I have a lot of these questions in the salon also, but that's normal. Uh, and you have to keep up with a shampoo or with a silver conditioner to keep the yellow out. It's just the one thing you can do. My hairdresser says I have fine hair, but it has a decent amount of density. What does this mean? And also, when I'm looking for hair inspiration, do I need to look at haircuts for only fine hair? Yes. Um, so your hairdresser uh, is really a good one because he or she is looking at your hair. So that's really somebody who knows what they are doing. So this is very important. So the density of your hair, it means the amount of hair you have on your head. So if you have a good density of your hair, you have a good amount of hair on your head. So it's not because you have fine hair, you cannot have a good density on your head or the opposite. You can have thick hair, but not a lot, a lot of hair on your head. So the density is less. So this is different. So if you have fine hair and you have a good density, so it means you have a lot of hair on your head. And uh, your second question, yes, you have to look only at hairstyles for fine hair. One of the main stress moments I have in my salon is that people come in my salon with a, with a picture and I can already see it's not good for you. If you have fine hair, you cannot ask for a, a, a hair style that has a lot of volume, a lot of curls. It's like, it's like me wanted to be like Brad Pitt. It's not possible. It's really obvious it's not possible, but it's not possible if you have fine hair and, you ha and you're taking a picture with really thick, long hair. And also, if you have hair with a length like this, don't show a picture with this. Because the style, like these beach waves, if it's hair through here, these beach waves are really different on the length through here. If you are searching for a hairstyle, you always have to be honest with yourself Look in the mirror and you can see what you have. Be honest with yourself. Look what you can get. Don't look what you want to get. Look in the mirror, be honest with yourself, see what you got and then search for the right hairstyle. Don't say I want that 
and you already know you cannot have it. So look at the length, look at the thickness. If you have curly hair and you want a straight hairstyle, you know you will have a lot of work to maintain that. If you have a really straight hair and you want to have this beach wave, you know you will have to work a very long time every day to keep up with that hairstyle. Take a hairstyle that is easy for you to maintain at home. Because at the hair salon, it's no problem. You can do anything. But at home, you will have a problem. And then you have a frustration. And then you have stress. And you are not happy with the hairstyle. And you are not happy with the hair salon. The hairdresser can help you. But if the hair hairdresser saying to you, it's not possible with your hair, don't be offended. Take it as a tip. We only want the best thing for you. We only want that clients are happy to go outside because that's a positive thing you're making advertising for the salon because you are happy. If you are not happy, then we are not happy. Our goal, our objective is to make every client happy. So if we are giving a tip or we are, we are saying it's not possible, then you have to believe that. So the last question for today, um, my son has dry scalp. Is there any dandruff shampoo that won't wash the toner out of his highlights? First of all, if you have a dry scalp, uh, then you have the dandruff shampoo for dry scalp. You have two different dandruffs. You are having dandruff that are sticking to your scalp, that's a greasy one, and then you are the ones that are falling out, and it's like, it's, it's, is it snowing, you know that? Uh, so this is a dry one. So make sure you are using the right dandruff shampoo, because there are many brands that are just having dandruff shampoo. So if you are having a brand with just one bottle of dandruff, don't buy that. It has to be dry dandruff or greasy dandruff. So dry dandruff, so it has to falling out. If you are using a dandruff shampoo for dry scalp, normally it's not aggressive for your hair and your color. If you are using a dandruff shampoo for greasy scalp, then it's really damaging your uh, color because all the shampoos for greasy hair or for greasy scalp are a little more aggressive to taking out the greasy scalp uh, layer. This is the only thing I can say and every shampoo, every shampoo will change your highlights. Because I explained a few uh, questions ago, your highlights will change again to yellow because it's one to heal themselves. So it's really important that you are uh, using a very gentle shampoo, uh, a natural one without all these bad ingredients of sulfate, parabens, uh, PEC, uh, so, and then you are cleaning your hair very gently. That was the last one. I really hope this video gave you a lot of hair tips. If you are having any question, put them below this video. First of all, Q&A and then your question and then I can add them through here. All these other questions, I have many questions. I think I have 50 or 60 more questions. So I'll make them in another video. If you are having a lot of hair tips, you are happy with this Q&A uh, video, give this video a thumbs up. Can I ask you to subscribe to my channel, press that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram and you can also follow me <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying wrong. I'm just saying TikTok. Okay. For now, I'm just saying thank you for watching and ciao guys!